And with our best partner ado, let's bring our next storyteller, Julia. I hate performing after him just because I'm ready to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Now I have to concentrate into my life. Um, my name is Julia Stoyanova. I am. I've been in the country for six years, and yeah, it's been a journey ever since. And for the last one year, I think I kind of, you know, I'm seeing how I'm getting Americanized with every year because I start, you know, reflecting for myself, and I. I actually start going to therapy. My parents are like, what? <laughs> because immigrants, they don't believe in therapy. They don't even think that mental health is a thing. They don't even think that childish, you know, trauma is something, you know, absolutely not. But it's very interesting when you start going to therapy uh, that all of the stories from your childhood are start coming out, right? And you're like, oh, now I know why sometimes I'm like, you know, that crazy. <laughs> and what is the first thing that you guys are learning on therapy? That people are not the problem, right? Who is the problem? Yeah. Your parents, correct? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, and that's why I'm here uh, to tell you one story that I think it's funny, but my therapist it thinks that it's very tragic. <laughs> um, just to give you a hand about my parents, one, they were, they had me in their early, early 20s, and they just came out of communism. Mm. Not a good scenario to begin with. Um, so, and also my father, he's a guy with a neck tattoo. So, yeah, which is actually pretty sweet because he decided to tattoo my first letter and my mom's first letter. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I like to feel and just imagine my dad that someday he had this, you know, very warm feeling into his chest of love and he was like, what is that? I have to do something about it, but I don't know what to do. So now I'm going to just go and do the most manly thing. <laughs> and just go and stab a machine full of needle into my neck. Rather simply going home and tell my, 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 my wife and kids that I love them, you know. He's a man of actions. I respect that. Um, so I'm seven years old. And I wanted so badly to have a pet, just because we were so poor and I knew that my parents will not give me a sibling. So I was asking, I was like, can we please something, just give me something to play with. And one day my father came home and he was like, I have a surprise for you. And I was like, what is it? He was like, I got you a bunny. Cut one hour later, I'm crying, my father is cooking the rabbit. Oh. <laughs> he thought that it's going to be extremely funny talk, right? Yeah. And also, he was so, so uh, happy. He came so happy from home, and he was never coming happy from, you know, from work. And he, the thing is, the rabbit, the meat of rabbit is a very expensive meat and it's a delicacy in Bulgaria and he was feeling so good of himself because he finally had the money to provide it for our family. Mm -hmm. I of course did not see it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm ugly, ugly crying and just thinking about everything like does bunny are going to heaven, what is happening, just realizing the food chain, it was so much happening <laughs> in my head. But my father was getting frustrated by a second by this little brat that he's raising, apparently. And at some point, he just turned to me and he was like, listen, if you don't want to eat, you're going to go to bed hungry. Grabs me by my collar, 
drags me, this is how mad he is, drags me, open the door of the bedroom, put me in bed, close the door. I'm crying, but at some point I was so exhausted of emotions that I start, you know, falling asleep. And my father came, I think probably around 30 minutes later, and he walks me up. It would have been so good if the end of that story is like, yeah, my father told me, hey, I love you, and I realize that mental abuse is a thing. But one, he never told me that he loves me in my life till this day. And second, I don't think that he even know what is a mental abuse. So, <laughs> no, he woke me up and apparently he was sitting for 30 minutes and just watching my full plate and just thinking how not appreciative I am and how disappointed he is of raising that little brat. So he came, woke me up, dragged me back to the kitchen, put me on the chair, and said, you're gonna stay here because I saw your plan. You're gonna stay here and eat it, and you're not gonna go to bed before you finish your plate. He was talking to me like I'm a just genius who is trying to just go out of Alcatraz or something like that, <laughs> and he just found out about it. But, I start eating the rabbit and I start crying even harder because it was so delicious. <laughs> and made me feel so guilty. But I don't know, to me, that story is funny. And I think it's even funnier because I actually brought it up to my parents. And by the way, maybe you're asking, like, where is your mom through the whole story? She was right there, staying quiet because that's a strong Bulgarian marriage, okay? <laughs> uh, there are many things that I learned out of that story for myself and how I was raised and how my, what my parents thought that is right and what I think that it's right now wrong, right? So, all I'm trying to say is, uh, be nice to your kids so you can save them some money for therapy. <laughs> <laughs>